Okay, it is 9.49 a.m. and I want to go over a trade with CYBL and there was something I definitely could have done here that would have allowed me to have been profitable. Instead, I did lose a little bit and I traded CYBL because it just looks like um, a morning panic bounce play. Even though it hasn't been up like three considerable days in a row or anything like that, the stock is just known to do morning panic bounce plays regardless of how it looks on the chart. And it was down at least 10% on the day. I saw the pattern. I did get in at um, 938, 20,000 shares at 16. So I got in right here. But the problem was is that I really wanted to be in at 158. It looked like 158 was at the ask. The price action looks good. The amount of people at the bid were also supporting a move towards the upside. So... I thought, you know, I'm not going to take the time to change my limit from 16 to 158 and then place my order. Let me just place an order right here the way it is at 16, and I'm going to hit that guy at 158. But what happened was is that when I placed the order, the person at 158 left, and then 16 showed up at the ask, which would have been fine, honestly. But the problem was is that it was a 100K seller, and that was really bad. I was like... You know, you just open the door to a red flag. It just didn't seem good. So what happened was is that I immediately wanted to get out of the position because it almost felt like, you know, oh, I want to buy at 158. I have that limit at 16. 158 leaves and then 16 shows up and it's like, oh, hello. Here I am. 100,000 shares, you know, that I need to sell. And it just didn't seem like it was going to potentially do, you know, a move where it gets rid of that big seller with the amount of volume it was trading and you know i immediately wanted to get out and i did get out ultimately the twenty thousand shares at an average of 159 and that was at 940 right here i got out i was essentially in right here and i got out right here i just didn't like that big seller but what happened was is that i think he disappeared he might have been taken out but i think he just disappeared and it did eventually make a move so that was pretty cool but um, I think in the future on the OTC that doesn't trade with much volume, what I'm going to consider doing is just have a really tight limit. If it's not at the price I want to be in, then it's not going to be an entry for me or a fail. And that can uh, help me avoid something like that because perhaps, you know, if I were to have had that limit at 158 and I don't get executed, and then I see that price action with the big 100k seller, and then I see that it disappears or maybe it gets taken out. Maybe I would have been in the setup at a later, um, yeah, a later point. And then I would have been able to sell for a profit and be able to benefit from a morning panic bounce play, even if it doesn't trade with much volume. So I think that's a good lesson. I just need to have tighter limit prices. And there isn't really anything else I'm not too interested in other than SYXX I did have. And this is me trying to cancel the order right when I saw that big 100k seller at 16, but I still got filled. And yeah, right here with SYXX, I did try to buy 3,500 shares at 934, which was right here. What happened was is that I just didn't get filled. You know, 289 was at the ask, and I didn't want to be in right below VWeb because if it were to have failed, this morning panic bounce play setup that would have been super unprofitable. I just didn't get filled. It was no volume. I think the order sat for a while. I just I never got executed, and it had like a low volume move towards the upside. But I don't feel too bad missing it because even though it, it looks really nice, there was barely any volume for stuff like that to happen. I at least tried. It just wasn't you know, an opportunity for me to be in at the limit price that I wanted to be in because, again, I didn't want to be in right here. And sure, it would have been fine now because it did work out. But, again, imagine you see this and then you have to buy way off into the ask with a spread and then it fails and you're out at the 26s or 25s. That just would have been really bad. So, I had a good attempt with that. And I am looking at AITX if it wants to try to break 16, but I don't think it's going to do it. It might do it, but it just doesn't seem like it. I'll make an update later. Okay, it is 11.20 p.m. and I'm here to call it off. Overall, I'm going to be down $1 and I think 
57 cents. And I did have one more trade with LWLG. I didn't trade it as well as I could have. This was a morning panic bounce play setup. And I guess let me just go back to extended hours. I had two trend lines, I believe. Yeah, there was two, although it's not really noticeable anymore. And essentially when those two trend lines, you know, broke, it was a long setup. And I did get in at 10, 15, 25 shares at this price right here, just under um, six dollars at five dollars and ninety six cents ten fifteen right here i got in right here when it looked like it was trying to turn around it was trading and consolidating here for a while and it broke those two trend lines and i did sell uh, not half my position but a good chunk of it at 5.99 and that was at 10.17 right around here when it had this little peak right here and i'm actually pretty happy with that sell there Although the last piece, I felt like I did not sell this one as a, as well as I could have at 1019. I did get out 15 shares, the remaining piece at 596, which was right here. And what I would have liked to have done, and it was in my mind, but I didn't stick to it, was that I could have sold after ideally it makes a higher low. So this was the bottom. This could have been the higher low. And maybe I could have tried selling here. Or maybe uh, this would have been fine if I were to have sold here after it seems like it kind of broke this potential higher low. But then after that, it did eventually make a move towards VWAP. And I think I had an interest to get in right here. But um, I didn't. And I kind of regret that one. But at least the setup worked out. It didn't offer that much range. And I think I actually will do that. I will trade a $15 risk level minimum. Probably a 20 25 if it's a listed stock that was and OTC like L um, WLG and there were a few others like that um, I think ALPP is another one I still have a long way to go a lot of things I need to work on but that was pretty much it for today there were a few things I could have done better and um, yeah see why BL did play out so, although it would have been kind of hard and I was interested in SYXX and this would have been very profitable but I wasn't able to get filled there just a lot of things I have to keep getting better at. And I think I'm going to have like a really tiny, small red week, which is fine. I just have to keep going. And I'm going to try to continue to stick to that 20 to $25 risk level. That's all I have for today.